welcome to Alaska. We're heading out on a sockeye trip. Um, it's about 60 degrees, first week of July. Um, it's been raining for two days. It's not the temperature that gets you, it's the humidity, you know what they say. Um, so let me tell you about this adventure we're getting ready to go on here. Um, this is going to be an overnighter float. We've taken off. We're currently in basically a lake that's funneling down into a river. And so we're rowing through the last part of this lake to get into the river. We'll float down a little bit past that. We'll probably pull up for the night, do some fishing tonight, some fishing tomorrow morning, and then um, go the rest of the way down the river to the pullout where I have a bicycle. And um, I'll ride my bicycle back up to where I put in, to where my truck and my trailer is. I'll get that, I'll drive back down to where my boat is then, and I'll pick up my boat. Um, I like to think of it as the Alaska Triathlon. We're gonna do a little rowing, a little fishing, a little biking. Um, but it should be a really, really fun trip. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Granted, the weather isn't, I feel like, in our favor, but sometimes a little adversity um, is a nice thing. Make sure you remember the trip. And so with the rain, it's hard to say how much I'll be able to film. Um, I hope that I can kind of bring you along and show you some of the stuff and that we'll have a lot of fun. So um, we'll see you in a bit. All right, it's kind of quit raining, so we'll do a quick little gear check here. Um, I have a five gallon bucket. In my five gallon bucket, I have briquettes. It's kind of one of the luxuries that I brought along. I have clothes in here. I've got a sleeping bag in here. Um, I got cooking stuff there, extra water. This is a cooler that hopefully I'll be putting fish in. I have a, put a screen in the bottom of it. That way the fish slime goes to the bottom off the fish. Got a couple drinks in there right now. Um, I got a little snacky snack in there. Uh, a spare oar here and inside this main compartment here, there's a blade for the oar and the handle for the oar. And then I have a tent in there, a um, little bit of fishing tackle and whatnot. And in the oarsman seat here, take a quick look here, oarsman seat, this is a fish box. In my fish box, I got a pair of shoes I'm going to use to ride my bicycle back with, um, kind of a tackle bag, um, some extra tackle stuff there. And then um, I have more fishing stuff in here, in here, I have GoPro stuff in here. I brought a little barbecue and a chimney another cooler there and I have a net down there and in this back compartment I have life jacket and a sleeping pad um, and then um, that's an anchor nest so when you're driving down the road you can put the anchor in that anchors over the back there um, and so we're just floating down it looks like they're starting to rain just a little bit right now um, I'd like to say gorgeous day but eh, it's an okay day um, you can't complain when you're on the river when you're rowing a drift boat you get more power when you go backwards and so i can't see where i'm going but i look over my shoulder once in a while to see where i'm at and then i'm going to try to set a pace to that once you get into the river and the river's carrying you then you need to switch it around put the front going downstream so you can see what you're going to hit and try to avoid things but right now there's nothing to avoid um, and so we're just rowing we'll hit the river here pretty soon get a little bit easier Okay, we're just entering the river. I don't know how well you can see it. Um, the current right now is trying to push us into those bushes, so I'm gonna have to set this down and take over the oars here in a second. This is the very top of the river, the end of the lake. Um, tune in in a little bit. It only took a couple strokes on the oars and we're back in business here. Um, so you can see the faster water's over there. Kind of turns into a chute right here. This river is not really very wicked, and so um, it's kind of novice level river. Um, I mean, you could probably get into trouble, but I think you'd have to work hard at it. Um, hopefully we won't today. Um, but there are rocks and things you have to avoid, and there's sweepers that stick out. You'd want to get rammed up against the bank. That would be bad. Um, but uh, we'll be fishing soon. Okay. Well, this is number three right here. in the bank you might right there. That's pretty nice sun fun, yeah. All right, I've been fishing about an hour and a half. I picked up three fish. 
Um, we're going to make a little dinner here and then get back after it. Right now the limit is six per person. And so I have a chimney here. I don't think you can see it there. I've got a chimney here that the um, light briquettes. That's going. I got a barbecue over there. We'll look at that in a second. And I'm um, going to make some potatoes to start with. Put them in tin foil and put them on the barbecue. And then I will fillet some fish. And I brought a steak today because I, I knew I figured I would catch fish, but I was going to have steak. But you know, you pretty much kind of sort of have to um, eat that very first sockeye the entire season. Right, you catch it, don't you? On the river? Is that how it works? I don't know. I just make this stuff up, right? I'm gonna make these potatoes with no butter, but I do have salt and pepper. And so we'll do some salt and pepper on them. And so what I'm gonna do with this, and you probably have done this before yourselves, I'm going to put them in this tin foil, seal this tin foil up. And then I'll just put them on the barbecue when I get the barbecue going. Barbecue's not going yet. And I have a steak. Oh, back in the boat. And I have a fish here that I'm going to fillet. First official sockeye of the entire summer. Dandy, pretty happy about that. I probably hooked him up like the fourth cast. And I thought, man, it's going to be a heyday. And then um, we got slower after that. So that's kind of a bummer. And this is the first fish I filleted for the whole year, so could turn out to be a hatchet job. That would be very sad since it's on video. So far, so good, though. All right, so no flesh left on that. That was a pretty nice job for the first time of the year. And in Alaska, different places are different, but I'll tell you, in Alaska, everybody that knows how to fillet a fish puts the carcass back in the river because that's where it belongs. That is the next generation of salmon right there. And so right now, without washing this off, I'll show you what I got. I got two fillets. So now I got two pretty darn nice fillets. I'm going to rinse them off, put one in the cooler, and the other one we're going to make for dinner tonight. We're only going to do half of it, though. We'll look at that in a second. And so, on this fillet, this is the tail side, this is the head side here, there are no bones past about right here. And so we're going to cut, since I have a steak too, I'm going to make this a small fillet. So, I'm going to cook this tonight, this is going in the cooler. Alright, so we're still waiting for those coals to get done to put them in the barbecue, so we're going to go ahead and do a little fishing, you never know, I get lucky. Well, can't complain about that, huh? So when you get one of these fish, you bump them in the head and break a couple of these gills, what it ends up doing is it bleeds them out then. And that way when you fillet one, if you notice when you fillet that fish, there was no blood in that flesh, and so it makes it nice and clean. Okay, so we got our little barbecue going. We got our briquettes. Looks like they're doing pretty well.
that on there. Come on. There. And then these are the potatoes, so we're going to put those on there. Cover that up. Well, no sooner did I turn off my camera thinking I'm going to conserve batteries and stuff and I caught a fish. So I thought, well, I'm going to go to this chest mount and um, that will probably ensure that I don't catch one. But it would be kind of interesting to see that angle. I don't know what that angle looks like myself. So I guess I'll explain what I'm doing. I'm putting it in above 12 o'clock if 12 o'clock straight out in the river i can feel it tinkling along the bottom there i'm going to give it a stroke pull it out i'm going to go more to 12 o'clock here because i got too much weight on it watch you see if you watch you can see the tip of the pole here it starts jumping that's the weights hitting off the bottom and i like to get about two bounces and then pull on it and i'm just going to pull it slow because if you pull it really fast you might snag them and ideally i just want to get one right through the mouth Sam and I just a little bit longer. It's about midnight. I got yesterday's limit of fish. I'm moving down to another spot where I'm going to camp. But um, since it's tomorrow, I can um, see if I can get another limit of fish. So we'll take a look at some fish, play some fish when I get to this next spot, and then um, go ahead and maybe take a little nap. Okay, so there is the rest of my limit. If you remember, we filleted one for dinner. Um, I've moved to a new location. This is a nice um, gravel bar. Probably set up my tent right up here. Um, we'll probably look at that after a bit. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get back to filleting fish and get these fish done um, so we can kind of get the tent set up and turn in for the evening. All right, not a lot to see here. This is a little two-man, they call it a two-man tent. I don't know how you get two people in here, but um, that's the whole tent. So we got it set up on the riverbank. I think you saw that on the time lapse. And um, take a little nap, get up in the morning, see what's happening. Well, it's probably about four o'clock in the morning. I've slept as long as I can possibly sleep. And it's actually lighter than the GoPro makes it look. Um, I frequently say adversity builds memories. I don't really need to remember this that much, but um, it's going to be a poopy day in the neighborhood. But I'm going to get up and get moving here. You don't want it to push it too fast and have the grounds come out around the screen. So nice and slow.
breakfast is done. And so we get back on the river here. We got probably another mm, two hours of floating maybe. Nice, peaceful, lazy morning here. Not a sound other than the river. And my voice, sorry about that. We stopped real quickly here. The next, um, just around the corner in a little bit, will be our pullout. And so, even though this river is real easy, just avoid hitting the rocks. You want to make sure you don't miss your pullout, otherwise you're going to be floating down the river quite a few miles. You can see this tails off and has some pretty fast water. We'll ride this fast water for a minute, then we'll pull off toward the bank into the slow water. You can see just in front of that of the drift boat, there's a ramp that comes down. We'll pull in just in front of him, hopefully. Um, last, yesterday it was good, today it's real slow. What are you heading out for Kings? We've made it to the boat launch. Bike's just up here in a little bit. We'll take a look at that and we'll hit the road. That shouldn't take too terribly long, maybe an hour of bike riding. And then we'll be heading back this way. Well, there's the third leg the Kenai Peninsula Triathlon. Waiting right where I left it. So we'll hit the road with that. Hour or so. Beat the pickup truck and we'll come back. We're back to the sidelines of the Kenai Triathlon. We're in the third leg, the bicycling leg. We've just left pavement. We're on gravel now. Probably another four or five miles. Okay, we're back track side at the Kenai Triathlon. We're in the final stage. I think that it's easy to say, I've not seen another bicyclist anywhere. And so it's easy to say that we crushed the competition in this. Um, and so we're going to leave the bike here, pick up the truck, go down and get the boat. So a couple things to come, a little boat loading trek and um, we'll talk a little bit about processing. I got a couple things on processing that um, are still somewhat interesting. And so I'll see you guys at the boat launch.
In terms of processing fish, if you remember, I put, a, put fish in this cooler initially after I filleted them. them. Um, and you can see that the kind of the fish slime has ran to the bottom underneath the grate. So the fish came out, relatively speaking, slimish free, not all the way. Um, and then I, I when I f initially filleted those fish, I cut them into two pieces, tails, and then I call them the shanks, the front half. And so I bag them separately because when I go and vacuum pack them later on, uh, I just want to do the tails together and then I'll do these together because I'll smoke and can those. And so we'll look at the vacuum packing process a little bit later on. Um, anything that fish touches, this cooler, every single one of these jugs will have to be washed off with Clorox um, because there's nothing worse than seafood poisoning. We're going to go ahead and vacuum pack our salmon, which for me is the first step really in processing. I'll vacuum pack everything now. The tails, the section with no bones, I will go ahead and pack one or two, maybe three per bag. Um, because those are going to go right on my table. The shanks are that portion that's toward the head of the salmon that has bones in it. I split those down and I can part of them and then I smoke part of them. And I'll do that at a later point in time. There's really no point in wasting some of your gorgeous summer like this um, processing salmon when you can wait until the dreary days of fall after moose hunting. And um, you know, when, when it's raining and there's really nothing else to do, those are good days for processing salmon in terms of canning it and smoking it. And so I'm going to go ahead and get everything vacuum sealed up right now. We'll take a look at that. This is a pretty little, pretty cool little gizmo here. So we'll take a look at how that works as well. So these, this is the shank section of the sockeye, um, which is that upper half. And I'm going to put those in a larger bag. I'm going to put a bunch of them in here at the same time because again I'm going to process these later on into smoked fish or canned fish. I'm going to do the assembly line method where I do each step at a time because it just makes it easier. And right now I'm doing this outside because you can do it inside and drip blood and fish slime in your house and on the counters and, and everything else. Or you can do it outside, take a garden hose to it when you're done. Makes life a lot easier. Okay, and these are the tail sections, and so we're going to bag them in a smaller bag. And I have one person that I give single fillets to, and so I always like to make sure I get a few set aside for them. And then for my family, we always do, generally two fillets is enough for us. Or three. These are small sockeyes, so I'm going to put three in each one. And this was a total of nine sockeye that we took. And if you remember, well, I guess you wouldn't remember. Yeah, you would remember. Um, earlier in this video, um, I filleted one on the bank and we ate the tail off of that one. So really then we have, what, eight and three quarters salmon that we're doing here. And you'll notice I'm not being super um, picky yet. We'll do picky in just a second. Okay, now to make this thing work well, what you have to do is dry off 
the mouth of this uh, if there's no fish slime on it. And so we'll clean that off really good so that it gets a good seal. And you lay it in here. This is called the bar. Make sure that there's no wrinkles in the bar. You shut the lid. You push this on start. And this is the weirdest thing ever, I think. Notice how the bag puffs up. So it looks like it's full of air, but what it's doing is it's sucking all the air out of this chamber down to 99 point some percent. I don't know if you can see that. But I, uh, and then it holds that for like 10 seconds. And watch this now. It's going to seal this. And then it's going to put air back in the chamber. When it puts air back in the chamber, there's no air anywhere inside that bag. And so it's perfectly sealed. I've eaten fish that are three years old and it's as good as fresh fish. And so this thing is just amazing. Okay, so I got my nine salmon processed away in my vacuum packer. I'm currently, those are bags. I got my coolers here. I got chlorine bleach in those. I'll wash everything off that's in those, rinse everything off. Um, I'm gonna go put all this in the freezer. Hey, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.